In 2004, Brad Bird directed what many have referred to as a pure slice of Americana, combining both the ingenuity and know-how of a younger version of itself who traveled to the future to become the best movie ever made. And I am, of course, referring to The Incredibles. I truly believe you have no idea what you just said. But it was hard for me to pick my best Pixar film. I mean, I like the Toy Story series, but for me, Finding Nemo was one of the best Pixar movies ever made. Wow. From the art direction, to the voice acting, to just the overall feel-good story, Finding Nemo set itself apart from the rest of the Pixar films. Play the clips. That's not how this works. Oh, I got something to tell ya! Mine. Don't make any sudden moves. Hop inside my mouth if you want to live. The Incredibles plays out as both a great action film and a fantastic suburban sitcom, and you get a lot of great scenes from both. We get the at-home situations such as Dash uh, messing with his teacher at school, and uh, the father gives his typical fatherly response where he's just proud that he was able to run so fast the teacher couldn't see him. He moves! Right there! Wait, wait! Right there! We get the family life with the kids fighting. And we get a father who has to sneak away from his house to fight crime. <laughs> oh, my back. And all these things come together to encompass the overall theme, which is you know family togetherness, uh, working together to become stronger, take on any obstacle sort of thing. Finding Nemo doesn't have any of that. Getting through obstacles as a family is pretty easy when you all have superpowers, but Little Nemo's adventures through the ocean, now those are some obstacles. You have shark attack to Nemo being caught in a dentist's aquarium. He finds himself in some really troublous waters. See what I did there? <laughs> Troubled water, troubled script. The thing is paced poorly. I mean, sometimes it's firing on all cylinders, and at other times it's slowed down to a snail's pace. But you can always rely on one thing, and that's Ellen DeGeneres to save the day. Dory, that's a jellyfish! Oh, bad squishy, welcome. bad squishy! Shoot, 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 get me! Come here, let me see that. Don't touch it, don't touch I'm it. Don't touch it. I just want to look. I hate movies that go really fast sometimes and slow down in other scenes. I mean, come on, give me my edge of the seat the entire time or just let me fall asleep. It just seems like it goes a little too Corey at times. A little agree. too boring, a little too droll. But you can't. Are you done? Yeah, I got it out. There is one point I'll agree with you on, that is that Dora, played by Ellen, really steals the show. I mean, to take her comedic acting style and to bring it into this film, uh, that's just flawless. Run a clip on that? We got something what? to show? You keep saying this. A boat? Hey, I've seen a boat. You have? Uh-huh, and it passed by not too long ago. A white one? Hi, I'm Dory. Where? Which way? Oh, 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 it, it went, um, this way. Yeah, it went this way. Follow me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ellen has to compete with some hard competition over on Incredible Side, and that starts with Craig T. Nelson coaching his way through this thing. Because IMDB said that's what his name was, so we're just gonna go with that. You know, well, I didn't really know it, but then there's Elastic Girl played by Holly Hunter, well, once again, not a huge name. But we do have the ever-reliable Samuel L. Jackson playing Frozone. Honey! What? Where's my super suit? What? Where is my super suit? Uh I think what Adam's trying to say here is that neither film relied heavily on the cast, but more on the screenplay and the script for each actor. I think if you look closely in any film, you can find Samuel L. Jackson somewhere in the background wandering. That's right. That's a fact. And if you leave a dollar under your pillow at night, he'll come. Right then, the meeting has officially come to order. One of my favorite things about Finding Nemo is the personification of all the aquatic characters, mm. like the shark who is in therapy for eating the fish. Change this image. I must first change myself. Fish are friends, not food. Except stinking dolphins. Dolphins, yeah, they think they're so cute. And how the school teacher, the stingray, uh, acts as a school bus and all the little kids get on board and they 
go off the manta school ray, yard. but that's fine. Well, it's, it's a school a, bus. It's a stingray. I, I mean, you got the, the tail. And they're, pretty uh, sure he's a manta ray. Manta rays are larger than stingrays. I mean, they're the larger portion of the stingray, uh, stingray family. Stingray, I believe, part of the shark family. Manta ray, not as much. Shark family. Mm. I don't recall seeing the manta ray or the stingray on Shark Week taking out a, a seal. The aptly named Seal Island is home to 10,000 Cape Far seals. First at the kill means a feast. And some of the best parts of the film are when Nemo and Dory are just together and Dory, her forgetful self, is just running into him and, you know, they meet each other for the first time over and over and over again. Hey! Wait! What? Trying to swim here. Corey laid out a couple piddly scenes, and I did some earlier, but if you want a little bit more, uh, here's what I'm going to give you. Great action, great set pieces. Then, of course, we have the whole prison break sequence where we go into kind of a first person perspective with Dash outrunning a bunch of henchmen. I mean, the whole thing is just spectacular. I think there was a zebra somewhere in the background who's, of course, part of the elephant family. Oh, I see what you did there. I know a movie isn't required to have a villain of sorts, but I think it takes it to a whole other level. I mean, Hans Gruber and Die Hard made that thing what it is today, and we have Syndrome in The Incredibles, who I think takes it to level 10 out of a possible 10 levels. Sure, it was difficult, but you are worth it. I mean, after all, I am your biggest fan. That's your scale, it's the 10 out of 10 levels. Yeah. We're gonna crank it to 11 because oh. I agree with Adam, a movie doesn't always have to have a villain. In Finding Nemo, the villain is really time. Okay. And it's the adventure that somebody takes on, you know, Homeward Bound style. That movie sucks. <laughs> totally. Little dudes are just eggs, leave them on the beach to hatch, and then kick kick ca choo they find their way back to the big old blue. All by themselves? Job. We've battled our two Pixar films together. Now let us know what you think. Let us know what your favorite Pixar movie is. Leave us a comment on the video page below. Showtime. Getting through obstacles is pretty easy when you have superpowers, but little Nemo's adventures through the beautiful oceans of... <laughs> uh, something different. Can we do like a tour? <laughs> yes, Come with Nemo as we go on an adventure the camera, through the ocean. falls through the ocean. We like see gorgeous stuff. coral reefs. Getting through obstacles is pretty easy when you have superpowers. Unlike getting through this sentence, <laughs> getting through obstacles is quite easy. Troubled waters, troubled scripts. I mean, the, <laughs> troubled waters. Tr tr troubled, ah, ah. troubled sentence. Yep. <laughs> that's your scale? There's just 10 levels to every movie? At least. All right. Well, I guess that's max. <laughs> 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 At least. There's probably 50. There's probably more. <laughs>